morning, this is Chaplain Gooden with the 398th on the Battalion Chaplain. Uh, we're going to have worship service this morning. Uh, let's start with a word of prayer together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time together. I thank you for the men and women here gathered to uh, worship you and to learn from your word. I just pray that you'd speak to their hearts and minds, help them to hear from you, and make it more about uh, what you're saying to them, not, not what I'm saying. Speak through me. Help them to hear your truths from Scripture. And Lord, whatever they're going through, I pray that you guide them in the right way. We know everyone's going through something tough. Uh, life is tough. I just pray that you'd give us strength when we need it the most. Your Holy Spirit would fill us and uh, lead us on the right path. And Lord, I just pray the rest of this day would go well. And those watching this would also be blessed and, and guided by you and, and their families as well. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Well, this morning um, we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about um, our attitude towards others, and we're going to talk about um, the idea of fear and how to deal with that. So, first thing I want to do is actually have a responsive reading. So, those of you in the room with me, this red uh, hymnal here, we're going to turn to the back. The actual page number will be 671. It's uh, reading number 651. Page 671. I'm going to read what's not bold. We're all together going to read what's bold. Okay? Yeah. All right. Do not fret over those who do evil, nor worry because they do wrong. For like grass, they shall suddenly wither. Like the greenness of grass, they shall fade. Trust, Trust in, in the Lord, Lord and do good. Enjoy, enjoy the earth in security. security. Take delight in the Lord. Lord. He will give what your heart desires. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust him, for he is active. He will make justice come like the dawn, like noon daylight, your justification. 
The Lord has help for the righteous. In troubled times, he is their refuge. The Lord gives them help. He delivers them from the wicked. He saves them, for they trust him. Thank you. Amen. So, when we read that, you know, we, it talks about, you know, not fretting, not, not um, being afraid of those who do evil. You know, we live in a world, as you very well know, that's full of evil. And we, we see it so much on the news. We see it all around us. And it's easy to give in to that fear, isn't it? Um, we've become overwhelmed. And I don't know what each one of your experiences is with fear and with evil and with dealing with persecution or hate. But it's a real, a very real thing, and I take it very seriously. But we have to remember as Christians that we don't have to be overwhelmed. We don't have to be overcome by that fear because we know that God is above that fear. He's, he's the master of the universe, and he is love, and it, as love has conquered fear and death. So I want to remind you of that this morning, and we're going to dive into that a little bit more. Uh we're going to look at Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. For those of you who have a Bible next to you there, you can turn to it. Isaiah 41, 10. And you might have heard this passage before, this specific verse. I'll wait for you to get there with me. Isaiah 41, 10. It says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isn't that good? So that should give you some encouragement right there, an awful lot of encouragement. He's commanding us not to fear. He says, I am with you. He's commanding us not to be dismayed, because he's our God. And he's promised to strengthen us and help us and uphold us with his righteous right hand. That's some good stuff right there. I want you to really grasp that and hold on to that promise because that's powerful. And I often remind people also of a passage in, in uh, Joshua. And you don't have to turn there right now, but I'll put it, for those of you watching, I'll put it on the screen. Joshua 1.9, it says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be discouraged and do not be terrified. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And that's one I go back to constantly. You know, I, because he's again commanded us to be strong and courageous. And the question is, how do we do that? You know, in our own frailty, in our weakness, how do we be strong and courageous? Because being courageous and being brave is not always an easy thing to do. Especially in this world, as we said before, that's full of evil and hate and all kinds of difficulty. But the Lord has promised to be our strength. And it says in that first verse we read in Isaiah, I will strengthen you and help you. And I guess the question for you is, how does God do that? And, you know, it's one thing to read these scriptures and to say, oh, I believe that. But do you really, do you truly believe that? And have you experienced that in your own life? I want you to think about that. I can't answer that for each one of you. Well, only you can, but I encourage you to talk to the Lord about that. And so... When we talk about the idea of fear, then we have to move on to, okay, if we are able to conquer that fear through God's strength, which we are, he's promised that's possible, and he will help us do that if we trust in him. Now, what do we do from that point? If we have that courage, if we have that bravery and that confidence in the Lord, not in and of ourselves, but from his strength, where do we go from there? Do we just keep that to ourselves? Do we use it for selfish reasons just to benefit ourselves or, or do we use that to bless our family our friends those around us fellow soldiers that we come in contact with i want to read this uh not, not really read but go over this devotion i i wrote um it's not about me but it, it god inspired me to kind of write this but in second corinthians 13 14 and again i'll put this on the screen for you um it's a blessing, and many times you'll hear pastors give this kind of benediction at the end of a service. It says, 
May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of, all, of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And people say things like that, or you say, you have a great day, I'm, I'm going to be praying for you. you, know, you be blessed, God bless you. We say things like that, but what are we actually following through with that? Or are those just words? You know, um, I was talking yesterday in the unit um, about having an attitude of gratitude and not just saying good words or saying kind words, which are good things to do, but actually living out what you're saying. You know, actually, you know, uh, walking the talk, as they say, not just uh, talking the talk, but walking the walk, as the old saying goes. So, Yeah, um, so what it, as we look at that passage, it says, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's start with, let's break this down a little bit. So what is the grace of Jesus? Let's start with that. One of the great definitions of grace is unmerited favor. It's something we don't deserve that God's freely given us. In other words, none of us is good enough to deserve that, but God still gave it to us anyway. And it's important that we stop right here for a moment and ask an extremely important question. Is there, is there now or has there ever been anyone in the whole world that's deserved that grace? Well, that's a kind of a trick question because, as you know, Jesus himself became a human being and is the only one in history that's, that was perfect, as the Bible says. So he's the only one that would ever have deserved God's grace and was perfect but as you know he uh, freely gave himself up to be the sacrifice for us and and took on himself all the penalty of the sin that we deserve and that was for all time so that's God's grace through Christ but other than Christ's perfect example there's nothing that we could ever do to deserve God's grace now that we talked about the grace of Christ, now we have to turn to God's love. <clears throat> and, you know, can something so vast and so endless ever be defined, especially through human words? Not really. I don't think so. We can never really explain what God's love is. The Bible talks about um, God being love. He, he defines what love is. We talk about agape love, which is unconditional love. Again, something we never deserve. But he loves us anyway. It's not, a con it's not conditioned on what we've done or how much we go to church or what good we do in the community or you know how much money we spend to feed the poor. And none of that matters because we can never do enough to deserve God's love, but he loves us anyway. He loves even the worst person in the whole world that's done the worst possible things you can imagine. He still loves them somehow. And we could never love anyone like that, but God can. And that's just amazing to me. We know that his love is steadfast and endures forever, as we see in Psalm 136, verse 26. We know that God's love comforts us, in Zephaniah 3.17. We know his love was shown by sending his son Jesus to die for us, in John, John 3.16. That's one many of us have heard. For God so loved the world that he sent his son. Put simply, this means that God loves us perfectly and completely no matter what. That's the love of God. So then we move on to the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. What does that exactly mean? Well, we have to remember that the Holy Spirit is literally the Spirit of God. This means that when people say that you can be filled with the Holy Spirit, they're saying that you can be filled with God himself. That's really an astounding thought, isn't it? If you haven't already experienced this level of intimacy with God, let me tell you that it will change you profoundly and it'll redirect your desires from one that ones that uh, focus on yourself and focus on uh, really unrighteous things to, to focusing on God and focusing on righteous things and wanting to please him. And we see also that uh, the Holy Spirit enables uh, is uh, communicating with your spirit and um, 
you know, so you can communicate with God. He's like an intercessory um, uh, intermediary, I should say, between you and God. And, and Scripture talks about that. It says in Romans 8, 16, the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Also, also, Paul also writes 10 verses later, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. When we don't know what we ought to pray for, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groans that words can't express. I love that verse because sometimes we're just hurting so much we don't know how to pray. We don't know what, what words to use. We just are basically saying help to God. But through the Holy Spirit, He intercedes for us with the Father, and God already knows what we need. That's pretty amazing. So I want, what I want you to think about today and this coming week is whether or not we are wishing for others, as the Apostle Paul did when he wrote this letter to the church in Corinth, the three things we looked at, namely the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Do we really truly want that for people? Do we want that for people we come in contact with on a daily basis? What about the people we don't exactly like being around? I just want you to remember that uh, no one in this world deserves anything from the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit. However, every single person in the world absolutely needs the grace, love, and fellowship of God. And let's be the ones that point people to God, and even the people we don't like being around. <laughs> so, when we talk about our attitude towards others, as I said in the beginning, we need to really evaluate our intentions you know and in, in this I don't know if it's just this culture in America or also other cultures but we tend to have like a surface personality we tend to when we come across people you see it you see you've probably seen it this morning already and you'll see it again people you walk up to someone hey how you doing I'm good that's where it stops you know what I'm saying <laughs> have you seen that and but that's not really communicating truly and caring for people and I'm guilty of that too that's just a habit we have of saying how you doing and then say I'm good I, I went up to a soldier yesterday I said how you doing he said I'm good and I said now are you really good or are you just saying you're good he's like well I'm probably just saying good. you know and I think we would all pretty much say the same thing if someone pressed us on it We'd, be able, we'd probably say, well, actually, this is going on, this is going on, if we really dug a little bit deeper. We don't always have the time to do that. But when you do, I encourage you to, to dig a little bit deeper with people. Um, and I think you'd be surprised how they open up to you. That doesn't mean you have to have all the answers, but you know the one you can point them to that has all the answers. Does that make sense? And... When we have that attitude of gratitude, we're thankful for what God has given us. Uh, I've seen an awful lot of uh, bitterness in our world as of late. That's nothing new in our world, but maybe I've seen a little bit more lately. Maybe there's more attention focused on it right now in the media. And just because of everything the world's gone through with COVID and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, racial division and prejudice and uh, violence um, the list goes on and on um, I there's just so much more focus put on that right now and that 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 attitude of bitterness and hate you know that's the opposite of what Christ called us to be and so whenever we look at anyone we should always remember this this passage and truly ask ourselves, do we want this for people? Do we want this even for a, str a stranger we don't even know? Because God has called us to love everyone. He's called us to um, be Im imitators of Christ. And if you look at Christ's life, he went to the outcasts of society. He went to the people that the, uh, the rest of society didn't want anything to do with. The lepers, the poor, uh, the blind, you know, um, the uh, uh, Samaritans, you know, the lady at the well. He went to the people that the Jews hated. Um, the, uh, he, you know, those are just the people he knew 
needed him. He said, I didn't come for the healthy, I came for the sick. And so we should be imitators of Christ in that same way. We should realize God didn't call me to necessarily just be comfortable where I am and and just be around the people that I, I, don't, I feel the most comfortable with and I don't feel threatened by and, and just ignore everyone else. That's the easy thing to do. That's the, that's the easy thing to do. And I can't tell each one of you specifically what God's calling you to do, but I think he has called each one of us to do something. But we all have in common that he's called us to be imitators of Christ and to love one another. And it says, in fact, in John, they will know you're my disciples if you have love for one another. And that's so true. I think the best witness we can possibly have is loving people and then seeing us live out the life of love and and peace and um, not being overcome by fear as we talked about if they see you being courageous and confident in Christ they'll want to know why they'll, they'll want to say you know how why are you not being affected by all this like I am you know what what secret do you have you know if you look at any bookstore or even Amazon now I guess is where most people get their books but you'll see a lot of self-help books about overcoming fear overcoming depression overcoming uh, feelings of anxiety or you know it goes on and on but all those self-help books but we know that the Lord himself is the helper that we need and he's given us the promise that he'll be with us and he's told us to be strong and courageous he's told us he'll help us with his righteous right hand and so I want you to believe that this morning I can't believe it for you you got to believe it yourself and if you have more questions I'm here to talk with you I encourage you to read scripture I encourage you to um, if it's safe with COVID to attend a church near you or at least there are a lot of good uh, online services now but you know pursue it you know don't just wait for someone to, to tell it to you go and find it go and find the truth it's it's here in scripture it's it's um, available through the Holy Spirit if you just talk to the Lord he'll give you that strength you need I promise you and again I'm available if you'd like to talk with me so let's uh, say a word of prayer and um, I thank you for joining me and God bless you and may he give you the strength and, and courage that you need let's pray Lord, I thank you again for these men and women. I pray that you bless them richly, give them guidance and courage and, and strength um, as they go about their lives. Lord, only you know exactly what each one of these men and women need. Only you know exactly what they're going through in their personal lives and what's in their heart and mind. Sometimes we bury things down. We don't know what to do with things that we've been hurt by in the past. We don't know um, who to talk to about it. We don't know uh, who to open up and trust. But Lord, we know we can trust you. And we know that your Holy Spirit will guide us to who we can talk to, will guide us in how we can get the help that we need because you promised to be our help and to be our strength through your righteous right hand. So I pray, Lord, that you'd intervene, intercede, and work out those um, things that seem impossible just open doors and help to smooth out things that seem impossible to resolve. And Lord, we just give this time to you, and I pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen.